Hi, my name is Andy Hughes. I'm an application engineer with Cadence, and I'd like to show you today the capabilities of AWR design environment to integrate system simulation with EM simulation of the printed circuit board. Uh, integrate uh, the microwave office has to integrate. Sorry, can you start that one? Yep, more yep. Actually, I'm glad I'm glad you said that because I'm going to stop it. Oh, hang on. Three, two, one. Today, I'm going to show you the ability of AWR to integrate system simulation with electromagnetic simulation to uh, achieve uh, the overall simulation of what you might uh, call a chips and tracks uh, approach. Uh, um, uh, start from the top. Yeah, stop from the top. Ugh. Today, I want to show you AWRDE's ability to integrate system simulation with electromagnetic simulation. The, one of the main applications of this is to be able to model s systems where uh, many of the components are packaged devices, but you need to account for the uh, propagation and coupling uh, characteristics of the printed circuit board into which they are placed. You can see here on the left hand side we have a, syst a system diagram unlike a schematic where we use resist resistors, capacitors, etc. In the system diagram we are using uh, behavioral models for things like uh, oscillators, attenuators, amplifiers and we're doing a, so we're doing a simulation of the system at that top level. And <clears throat> when we perform that system simulation uh, on the right hand side there is a plot of cascaded system power. This shows you the development of power within that si as you move through that system. So from the left hand side we start off with an oscillator signal and we move through the amplifiers and attenuators. We eventually go out through an, a, a transmit antenna through a transmission path which is where you see that very large drop in the uh, signal power and then coming back through the receive antenna and out to the other side. Now, the system simulation at the moment is assuming perfect electrical connections between all those blocks. So now we go and design this system as an actual circuit board. And here is an example. Well, here is the system. Here we are simulate, we've now built this as a circuit simulation using package devices. And you can see on the right hand side we have a printed circuit board. This printed circuit board is complete with a ground flood layer uh, and also uh, uh, vias stitching that ground layer to the back layer, uh, uh, the RF layer of the board. Now we take that RF PCB and we do an electromagnetic analysis. Microwave Office has special capabilities to, uh, called extraction to allow us to take the circuit board and create an EM simulatable geometry. In this view, on the left hand side you can see the printed circuit board all those numbers are internal ports uh, where they are locations where m component models are inserted for simulation so uh, again packaged amplifiers, packaged attenuators uh, possibly, so possibly some surface mount uh, um, components like capacitors and inductors might be included in there as well and on the right hand side I am sh in this view I am showing you the uh, electromagnet the, the mesh uh, of this uh, electromagnetic simulation. This particular example was simulated using AWR's Axiom simulator, which is a 2D simulator. We, uh, it's very, very uh, good for this type of, uh, job of this uh, design, where most of the um, activity is going on, on the top. But in fact, there is only effectively one dielectric layer. Uh, there isn't because of the RF ground plane directly underneath. Finally. We have an element, a new element in VSS, which enables us to, to then take the results from that electromagnetic simulation and apply them inside the system simulation. So if I zoom into this for a minute, you'll see we have these elements called INTRCON. In these elements, we can actually, uh, we have five different ways of, uh, of, uh, of uh, simulating a, an interconnect. You can see it could be simple as a, a, just a, a little attenuator. You can uh, use microstrip. Uh, you can 
uh, use a, a, a transmission line model where you define electrical length at a particular frequency and characteristic impedance. But crucially, the really important ones here are these two, linear co-simulation and coupling co-simulation. Linear co-simulation takes account of the S parameters between any two port, directly between two ports. Coupling co-simulation also then wraps in the coupling between all the uh, uh, lines as well. So if we just take a look at what this actually means at the end of the day. So the results of this simulation are, are shown here compared with the original. Uh, so if you remember in the original system simulation where we're taking, uh, not accounting for the uh, PCB effects, that was the green trace. In this one, the red trace is showing you what happens when you include those effects. And crucially, it's what's going on down here there is power coupling between two, tr two non-adjacent traces and is resulting in this discrepancy of system power. Uh, so, the, so I hope I've shown you there that we do have the ability in the software, as I, as I said when I first introduced it, to integrate electromagnetic simulation of PCBs with system simulation. Thank you for watching. For more information, please go to cadence.com.